to you all and I thank the Lisbon Consortium for the invitation, in particular Professor Isabel Gil. I would like to start this presentation about industrial documentaries with a movie. There are many examples and I chose as palavras e os fios, words and cables, because it's very interesting to see how a technical issue can be transformed in an active an artistic subject. This documentary was made in 1962 by Fernando Lopes, a director who died two years ago, more or less. The main goal is to show how the company Cellcat produces good electrical and optical cables. The quality of the cables is not confirmed by its characteristics like strength or weight but by the good-looking appearance and the artistic way how these cables are shown. I must say, at a certain point there is um, the voice of a narrator speaking in Portuguese, but in a short talk and in a poetic style, because the images express themselves. Uh, let's see.
Industrial documentaries belong to a cinematographic category with limited visibility in cinema and rarely used as a valid source of information. But if we look carefully, these films could be very useful as they give us an insight into the economic, social and cultural reality of companies and also on the country's global context. The picture and sound data on these films are a large research field allowing a deeper knowledge of corporate lifestyles in companies and revealing additional information to the written documents. In fact, we could discover in this film in these films, factory buildings, machines, equipments, products and, of course, employees. They document, for example, factory visits, company reunions, shareholder meetings, fairs and products in action. They can tell us a product story from the delivery of raw materials to the shipping of the finished product. They can also illustrate the advantages of a new product and innovation of a new method of production. By observing how collaborators, workers and businessmen are portrayed in these documentaries, we are able to gain insight into the social panorama of the time. For example, we can study how these films were used sometimes to recruit workers and employees and which strategies were more common to achieve that objective. Some films were made to train workers in new production lines with visual strategies providing guidelines for technical actions. All these movies, together with written sources, will allow an improved knowledge about different manufacturing systems and labor organizations. Companies use film to project a certain image and create what is usually known as a corporate identity and social cohesion. In this context, are very useful the documentaries called Film Event, with its own temporal and spatial logic. A film event always implies the notion of programming and planning. This is very important, and I will repeat. A film event always implies the notion of programming and planning. These films recording and documenting company events and celebrations are meant to foster the company's cohesion and induce in their audience a spirit of cooperation, particularly if and when they are shown at other company events that serve that same purpose. <coughs> Non-commercial exhibition was the dominant practice for distributed industrial films. Using the company's own channels of distribution and other non-commercial channel, channels, Industrial films were screened nationally and internationally at trade fairs, in schools and universities, in churches, in social and economic associations, as well as at public and private institutions, like in film clubs, at trade events and lecture, lecture tours, in consulates and embassies, etc. It's important to study the distribution channels of these documentaries because that gives us clues about their impact and if they really reach the target groups and how did they react. In fact, sometimes documentaries like this stayed lost in an old room and few people saw them. The analysis of industrial films cannot be divorced from the conditions of their production and the context of their use. Far from constituting self-sufficient entities for the aesthetics analysis, industrial films have to, to be understood in terms of their specific organizational purpose and in very context of power and practice in which they appear. All industrial films have an, have an occasion, a purpose and an address, rather than an author or director. All of these films have a job to do. They are used not only to sustain, but also improve organizational performance on all levels, from administration to product develop, development and from production to marketing. These documentaries show traces of the forms of social and industrial organization which they once served. 
Their understanding depends on the degree to which a reconstruction of these frames of organization is possible. <coughs> As object of knowledge, industrial films transcend the boundaries of the material object of film and refer to a complex con constellation of media, technology forms of knowledge, discourse and social organization. In order to have a deeper understanding on this subject, are very useful the interviews with directors and technicians that live in during those times. Their statements help to clarify how these documentaries were made and which were the reasons and expectations that drove companies, institutions, public and private organizations to order these works as well as identifying the economic policies applied in different moments. With the help of that statement and other documentation, the film researcher must try to find three crucial aspects. First, understand and reconstruct the occasion for which the film was produced. Second, know the audience to which it was made. And third, who was the commissioning body that financed and ordered the film's production. In conclusion, these industrial documentaries should be considered as an historical source for future research and sociological, economic and human science in general. And now there is a, a challenge I made to all of you. These studies will also create an opportunity for young directors and new creators to make more movies like this, finding in industry the support they need to accomplish new artistic projects. Industry could become a topic in art because some companies still believe and invest in cinema as an important way, to, uh, an important way to express their vision. They still want to have movies for institutional memory, an archive of their images and sounds on different levels of activity. These old images may become in present days a source of initiatives and projects on top of being a piece of lost memory. This way, the old becomes new. Thank you.